I have a pair of cards to share with you today that are so cute and really aren't traditional holiday colors, but they totally work. Hey everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my channel and my studio. Today I'm going to take some brand new products from Pretty Pink Posh. I'm going to do some pouncing, pouncing, to add color, and then I'm going to do something with the leftovers. I talk a big game, but today I'm actually going to hit the ball. I, I don't know what I'm, to see those cards. It'll all make sense. So stick around. They're coming up next. Here's a look at the supplies I'll be using for today's card project. And this is a gorgeous tree cover plate from Pretty Pink Posh. Now I want to do a holiday card, but I'm going to go with my favorite colors, the pinks and the oranges and the yellows. And I'm actually gonna add my color today with paper pouncers. And the reason why I think this is such a great way to add color for something like this is instead of cutting out a bunch of different trees and having a bunch of different cardstock and running it through, all you have to do is run this through once and then color the individual items. I've already run this through, so let me grab that die cut, pop everything out, and we'll start to add color. So here you can see the die cut, how it comes out here, and all I'm gonna do is pop out the trees. And the fun thing is too, they're all the same size. So if I wanted to mix these up and move them around, I certainly could. There's no uh, rhyme or reason I could do whatever I wanted. Some have just some detailing and some have little pieces. And I think what I'm going to do is probably just back this with some matte gold cardstock. So I'm going to go ahead and just poke out I'm using an old little pokey pad thing here that I have. I'm going to poke out all the little pieces that I'm not going to use because I don't I don't need to uh, what is the word paper piece it in. I think that is would be fun, but that's not what the plan that's not the plan, Stan. So let me get all the pieces out and then we'll start pouncing on our color. What I decided to do was create a little more repetition by having three of the polka dot shapes, and I'm just gonna ditch out a few of the trees that I'm not gonna use. And that way I can work on a scheme for my color. So I'm gonna push these up out of the way. And actually I'm gonna push them right up off screen, but it'll help me to be able to see what I'm doing. And I'm gonna bring in one of my grip mats from Waffle Flower. And you can see where I first used my pouncer, it says enjoy. So we're gonna enjoy pouncing again. I think what I'll do is I'll start with pale pink, and then I think I'll do a pale pink here as well, and maybe one more down in the corner. So that way I can get all three done at once. And by pale pink, I'm gonna be using pink lemonade. It's a lovely color from Concord and Ninth. And I don't even think I've used my pink pouncer, no. Right now, I uh, these were sent to me from Picket Fence Studio. And right now I have a set for dye inks and a set for oxides. I'm kind of not doing oxides right now. Don't ask me why, I go through phases, right? And right now I'm just in a dye ink phase. I don't know. But here, this is such an easy, quick way to color a die cut. So instead of cutting each piece of cardstock and doing multiple things. I mean, you can obviously do it that way. I just wanna do this. I like the pouncing. It's this really high quality, dense makeup sponge. And I just think for people with mobility issues, which is one thing that they've talked about at Picket Fence Studio, it is such a fun way to quickly add color to die cuts, especially if you have anything that's really delicate. So. I'm just going to kind of try to go on the sides. I mean, you could flip it over and do the back too if you were so worried about the white sides, but I think that's going to be just fine. So I'm going to pick these up with, let's see, jewels, not tools. Pick this up. Oh, I guess it's not really stuck that hard. There we go. Perfect. And set these back in the order that I thought I was going to do. So put you guys up here. And we're going to move on to our next color, which I'm going to do the honeysuckle. And I'm going to use the same pouncer because it's pink, 
But for this, I'm going to just do one honeysuckle there and one here. I may not even get to all the colors that I think I'm going to get to. I'm not even worried about this on the uh, on the map, these, the ink. I'm just going to oh, pick it up, pounce it in. <laughs> Come on. I probably should have washed that off before I did it so that it had more sticking power. But again, we're pouncing it on. Look at that. Look at that. And it'll dry back beautifully. Oh, let me get a little there in the corner. Pounce and pounce, 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 pounce. Love it. Oh. All right. Pink and pink. Now, I am going to wipe this up just a little. And here... With the pouncers, you just pop them back in, pop the lid on, and there you go. And I don't mind if my matte stains. It's going to stain anytime I use a hot color. Uh, so the enjoy will show up there, and it will remind me to always enjoy what I'm doing. You know, I don't even know now. Well, we'll see. Let's get our nectar. And for that, I'm going to use an orange brush. Now, I have used this once before and I just want to show you I have a little I wanted to see how much was on here there's not much left on this from what I was using last time which I think was a Concord and Knife video in fact I have a very long live stream where I used these for the first time and if you are interested it is long I'll pop up a link because it was the first time I had ever used them so now I want to say we're going to take one of you and well, I can't do that one. I'm trying to create this little odd pairing of color. So if that's orange, this should be orange. And we'll see. We'll see how the buttercup looks. So we're loading this up with nectar. I'm going to press those down a little more into the mat. And we're adding this color. Now, there's no subtlety here, right? You're literally just making a nice solid color. And it's just yeah, I just think it's fun. I think it's fun to pounce it on. And I'm pouncing deeply into the little grooves and the little, they're like little score lines. But there you go. We now have orange. Pick you up. And, oh, come here. Pop you over here. And that's the nectar. Okay, load up, press, press, and pounce. Just like that. Oh, it's so fun to pounce. Great. We have pounced. We return to our domicile, and that's that. All right. So now I will get all this cleaned up. I'm going to put you here. This will dry back, and then we are going to start creating our little arrangement for our panel. I just had a change of heart. Well, I was thinking about this, and I think what I'm going to do, do I have an extra magnet on here? Hmm. I don't think I do. I'm going to put a little tape down because what I want to do is have this lay really flat. And, well, you know what? This is why you have a nice mat. You just tape it down knowing it's not going to stick. I think what I want to do is have these trees isolated and popped up on a note card. I know it's a, it's gonna be a little tricky to get foam in here, but I can do it and I believe in myself. Um, well, you know what, these aren't completely dry, so let's pop them in here. And I'll just show you how everything all fits in here beautifully, right? We got them, although that is very cute on the white panel. I love these colors. This is a very non-traditional, right, sort of color palette for a holiday card, but you know, and mix it up. And again, these are going to continue to dry back a little. The buttercup is pretty bold. So is the honeysuckle. But now I have all of these pieces in. So let me grab a little press and seal. I've got the magical press and seal. I've had the same container for a very long time because I don't do this very often. But here we go. We're going to get a little out. And then let's move you and move you. And we are just going to place this right down. Oh, that didn't quite work. It's got a little static, a little staticky. Get in there. Get in there. Place this down over 
the die cuts. Okay. Then what I like to do, knowing that my press and seal is not going to hurt anything, and do a little burnish, and then I'm just going to cut the excess off, and then I'll fold the rest under. All right, let me get. Some, I got to get you in there. Get in there. I got to get some foam squares working to put on the back of here. So let me do that off camera and I'll show you what it looks like. So I've put thin foam squares on the backs of all these trees. And then for these guys, I just cut my thin foam squares really small in half to try to fit in between the polka dots. And I think it'll work. I think it'll work. Sometimes it's a labor of love. I may have to add a couple extra. I don't know. I think I think there'll be enough, but you never know until you pop it down. So that's the plan. I went ahead and prepped a note card off camera. And what I'm going to do, I think, <laughs> wish me luck, is I'm just going to cut this extra side off because I don't want this to get in my way. And then maybe two, I'll do this as well. No, I'm not going to worry as much about this. Here's the thing. I'm afraid that if I <laughs> pop it down, it's going to it's going to move on me. And so, what I'm going to do is take my card. Here's my here's my little score buddy, right? Hold this in place. Make sure that I get the top of my note card cuz that would suck. <laughs> and we're just going to put it right in the top. Make sure everything is basically lined up and drop. Of course, you can do it the other way too, but I kind of wanted to do it this way. And now, hopefully, hopefully, all of my trees are going to be nicely supported and hopefully they're going to stay in place when I pull everything off. All right, this is, this is what we call a labor, the labor of love. I'm going to put you down like that. There we go. Push, push. It won't take long. It's not like a band-aid, right? You don't want to just rip it off. You want to give it a little, give a little massage and make sure that nothing's moving. I think, right? Yeah, you're coming. Good. Push you down inside. There we go. I think it's going to work. I think it's going to work. It never gets old. It never, ever ever gets old. Oh my gosh. <gasps> and look at my trees with just a little dimension in that lovely funky palette. How fun is that? See, so they cast a little shadow. You can go higher with your foam, but I didn't want to do that. So now I am going to get my Mary and I'm going to do a greeting in matte gold. I decided that I just wanted to glue three Marys together and I am just going to put that right in the middle. So the little points of contact here where it reaches, that's going to have to do. So I'm going to flip this over just to make it easier. I'm going to use some liquid glue and then I'll add just a little shine with some sequins. Sometimes I like the understated look a lot, you know, and that is the case with this. I just want to make sure I get enough little dots. I thought about doing gold. I, I, I cut one out. I didn't love it. I thought about doing honeysuckle cardstock and I didn't love it. I just liked the look of the white, the very tone on tone look. So let's pick you up and we'll place you down. So a little bit of the loop is on both. And then all I'm going to do is put my brick on here press to let that adhere. Let me grab some sequins. I've placed a few of my sparkle all the way, just silver sort of translucent sequins. And even though I have eight, I actually really like the arrangement. So I like odd numbers, but you know, you can mix it up, right? Just do what looks good to your eye and boop. And we'll add our sequins. I've got some smaller ones, boop, and then some medium-sized ones. Boop. I didn't go with the bigger sequins. I just didn't feel like it today. Boop. 
one here, boop, one here, boop, and one down, boop, right there. And that's my finished card project. So I actually think this is, this has got a little shine, but it's also clean and simple, added really nice color. And see how those colors just sort of dry back so nicely. I love it. I love doing that with this. And now I can save this and I can actually use this for something else. I have an idea for another card project. So I will set that aside and use that probably, hopefully in another video soon. I decided to add to this video because here's what I did. Well, I turned the camera off. I used this to stencil on the same colors that I pounced, but this time I ink blended. And as soon as this is completely dry, I am going to stamp on a few, just three different patterns with some pigment ink. I bought some gold pigment pigment ink from Honeybee Stamps. And rather than emboss in gold, I'm gonna see what it looks like. So hold tight, I'll grab the ink and we'll stamp onto the trees. This may be the first time I've ever used pigment ink, but I saw Jennifer McGuire use this particular ink in a video and I thought, you know what? That is pretty cute. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a pattern like this and repeat it on my card okay or actually maybe i just want to do three branch three branches because these trees line up perfectly and so what if i did we do one here one here and one here i'm just gonna try it i think i'll do one here because i i kind of messed up the top a little all right just get it basically lined up. I think even if it's a little off, it'll be fine. Press this. I'm gonna prime this just a little. And of course, I'm gonna have to let this dry. Pigment ink, right? I don't really, it's not really uh, in the wheelhouse of things, but I'm kind of excited to try this because it will shine on here and it will create, let's do another, this nice little element that is shiny. That's very cute. And even if it's not perfectly lined up, does not matter to me. So let me, I'm actually gonna clean this with a little stamp cleaner because I feel like pigment is hard to clean. So I'm gonna use my little scrubber, my little Hero Art scrubber. This thing gets it going and gets it good. All right, let's get that off there. Make sure it's dry. And then we'll go off to the side here with one. Maybe I'll come up, well, no, I'm not gonna come up much higher. I'm just, I'm just repeating a design for fun. All right, like that. Just press that down, give it one more. Oh, that's so fun. There we go. And again, ink it stamp it. And then I'll let that dry and we'll pop a greeting on. And we will have a panel ready for our card. All right. I stamped three offsets as well and made them, you know, purposefully offset. And again, it's in the gold pigment ink. And then all I'm going to do is just take this wee hol I, this little holiday greetings, which I also stamped in the gold pigment ink, and we'll just pop it right in the center of the card. Where is my liquid glue? And I don't think I'm gonna add anything else to this. I think this is really fun just by itself. And I just wanted, I thought, well, I could talk about what I was gonna do with it, but if I don't do it right away, chances are it's not gonna happen. And so I'm gonna pop that right in the center of the card. And there is my second card where I used the outline. Where's that outline? Well, now I can't find it, but where I used the outline die, the negative space to create a stencil for this card. Okay, now we're done. You can find links to all of the products I used in today's video in the YouTube description box.
If you're not a subscriber to my channel, I'd love to have you. So hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the notification bell as well so that you don't miss the next time I post. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day. To see more ideas for holiday card projects, check out the two thumbnails I have linked for you below and I'll see you in those videos.